The Hurling Show, brought to you in association with Torpy. Torpy are leading hurling into a new future with Bamboo, a revolutionary hurley created using their unique engineered hurling performance know-how. Already being used by many inter-county players, Torpy's Bamboo is highly sustainable, offers players greater striking distance and a more consistent balance every time, without compromising on natural feel. Check them out on the Torpy website and in the link below and enter the promo code RGAME to get yourself 10% off. Hello and welcome to the Hurling Show, sponsored by Torpy Bamboo. Michael Verney here with you today. Delighted to be joined by former uh, Dublin and Tipperary star Rhino the Wire. Ryan, how are you? How are you getting on? I wouldn't say star now, but I, 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 thanks. I'm, be, I'm being generous. Um, yeah. I was going to say to you uh, before we went on air, is there any time where you've never had some sort of a bandage either around your head or your hand? And then I see you have a nice little wrap around your hand there. Yeah, at the I look, it's, it's all for show. Sure. It's all for show. Sure. <laughs> I always say that, that that Colin Fenley and Shane O'Donnell are the two most foulable players in Hurling, but you're definitely the, one of the most... Uh, you definitely attract bandages, I'd say, better than any other hurler in the game. Yeah, well, I, I used to keep a blade in my sock, and if there was two minutes left in the game, I used to cut myself just to say, oh, yeah, look, he's been through the wars. It's all, it's all for sure. How many blood sub times do you reckon you've come off as a blood sub? Oh, jeez, I, I actually don't know. There was one match against uh, Galway in Tullamore. I actually came off about three times uh, <laughs> for blood. So I actually got a bit of my ear cut off. Um, I had to get surgery then the day after. But, um, yeah, that was... I actually ended up getting sent off. But uh, <laughs> I think I was just... I was so pissed off. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was probably the worst now. Where uh, I, I think, you know... It, you have to change your jersey. So I actually had four jerseys in my bag going home. Like, it was fucking it was mad. You have a good collection of, uh, you have a good collection of jerseys that say, probably not too many of them are 10 and 11. They usually end up with 31 or 32 or 36 or something <laughs> I, like that. Not, I actually there. have no jerseys. I have no jerseys. I give them all away to people. I, I've never swapped a jersey. Really? Why? Any, any reason in particular? Um, I suppose the, the my uh, this is all a psychological thing. I'll say I worked hard enough to get it, so I'm not giving it away uh, to another player. And then I, after the match, I just get signed and give it away to people anyway. But it's always either for someone that wants it or charity or whatever. But uh, yeah, ne I've never swapped a jersey. No, a nice touch, um, definitely a nice come, touch. Um, looking back at it, there's there's one or two I'd love to have swapped. Um, I think the one that I kind of regret was uh, we played tip in Torless now that the hockey does but I think it was, it was Brendan Cummins' last year playing with Tip and uh, I regret not swapping with him but um, but yeah that's probably the only one I regret swapping now but look that would have been a nice one to have, definitely. Yeah. Um, how how are you finding? Uh, I know you're involved with Fingalians who are in the uh, intermediate final this weekend. Your your coach and manager I, I, of Fingalians. How are you finding it? This is, a, I suppose, that's a nice distraction from Croke's been in a county final who you would have been involved with up until this year. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, look, it's great. I I got involved with Fingalians there last year. Um, as a coach and um, then the end of last year started this year they, they wanted me back as manager so went back in now manager coach uh, and then a few uh, help from a few lads there as well but um, look it's great they're a great bunch of lads um, when you get the buy in they'll do anything you want um, and it's great look they, they came up from junior there two years ago last year got to a county final in the intermediate when no one would expect them if there was promotion relegation they'd probably be favourites to get relegated but got to a county final and then kind of a bit of talk going around was Osh oh, looked was COVID year no one was no one was ready for no one was prepared right but we kind of I suppose we've we've kind of proved that last year wasn't a fluke now by getting back to a county final but it's nice getting to a county final you'd rather win them of course so, yeah uh, who are you playing at the weekend uh, Aaron's then, Island, is it yeah, Aaron's Isle weekend. So they had a com comprehensive win now over um over Olaf's uh, and Dotsy O'Callaghan was over Olaf's. So a bit of me was hoping Olaf's would win, so I get to play him in the final. But then at the same time, I was like, no, I don't want him to get to the final because if he was to beat me in the final, I I'd have to emigrate. Like I'd never, I'd I'd never be able to show me face again. Um, so it's a bittersweet thing that he didn't get there. But uh, look, Aaron's Isle, they're up against us. They're going to be a serious, serious outfit. Like they're, 
they're a, a solid team. They're Division Two in the league, um, which is a high standard. Like we're Division Four in the league, so we're going to be up against it. But look, all we can do is give a hundred percent. I think if our lads show up, I think we can we can certainly have a say in the game. But it's about showing up, you know yourself. It sounds like you've already upset the odds somewhat, even even to be there. So hopefully you'll give it a good rattle in the final. Um, obviously you're going to have your eyes on on Parnell on Saturday evening as well. It's live on RT too. Uh, yeah. Kim McCall Crokes, who you played with. I think you you try once you once you moved up to Dublin, you were with Crokes nearly all the time. The whole yeah, time, all I, the way through to last year. I moved up to Crokes uh, September 2010, and then by I think it was the November. I, I was already transferred to or no, November or December I transferred to Kilmacud and no, it's a great club there's great people out there it's phenomenal I'm delighted to see them back in the county final hopefully they'll, they'll right a few wrongs because if you look back right we won in 2014 um, could be wrong with the years now got bet in the 2015 was it 15 or 16 we got bet in 17 or no sorry 17 18 um yeah sorry 17 18 19 or something got bet in got bet in three of them anyway and it was oh it's it's gut wrenching like it's it's it just takes it from you and it was always cooler um coming out so i'm, I'm glad shane's not here today uh it was always cooler coming out on the the good side and then we i was 2018 was we had boarding in the final um could have won the first day could have won the second day but uh like they went to a replay and it was just everything that could have gone wrong the second day went wrong. Like uh, I was gone off two minutes into the second half. I tore my hamstring. Niall Carkin went off as well. He got injured. Um, and then I think Damien Kelly. So our, our whole half back line were gone. Um, so it was kind of it was the kind of the foundation uh, for the attack was gone. And it was just it was sickening, absolutely sickening. But sure. Look, so I'm delighted to see them back there now. Have those final defeats left much scarring, do you think? Because it is, I know Eddie Gibbons was talking in the media earlier on this week. He said that it is something that maybe some players would take with them, but he said there's also been a big overhaul of personnel as well. And a lot yeah, of those younger players don't take the baggage with few, them. Only if you said that, I was actually about to say it. Um, if this was a year or two ago, then yeah, I would say there's there, there'd be a bit of scar tissue there, but there's not now. Um, like now, this is off the top of my head, the team, like you, Keen McGowan, Bill O'Carroll. Fergal Whiteley was there, what, from 16 on. Um, Ronan Hayes, Quail on Conway. There's only the, the, there's five or six there that were there, uh, Ushin O'Rourke as well, that were there for those games. Um, like, there's so many new players. Like, you see that there was five on the under 20, Dublin under 20s this year. Five of those are playing now. Like, it's a new team. Um, when... I suppose when Cro the last time Crokes won the county final in 2014, the lads that are playing on that now were under 12, under 13, under 14. Mm. So it's a it's a whole new, I won't say a whole new setup, but there's there's a lot of new players there. And like it's great. And I, I certainly think that if if they're if they're handled in the right way, you, it could be this, and I don't want to jinx them, I don't want the commentators course happening here, but if they're if they're managed in the right way, handled in the right way. And the, the focus in the right way, I think it could be the start of a, a dynasty. When you saw Bowden winning five counties in a row, it could be. The, no, I'm not saying it will be, but it could be the same with uh, Kilmico because you see the players coming through and they're just, they can, they can make a, a slater talk. How impressed were you with the semi final performance? As you said, Kula have had. Uh... I've had it over you probably in in recent years, apart from that semi final, big semi final win you had over them a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah. That was such a big win. But again, if you don't get over the line on Saturday evening, it's kind of all for nothing again. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And like, they, look, I suppose just the last few minutes there, I've been talking croaks up. You, you can't go into the game saying, oh, look, all we have to do is show up. Like, Nafina are going to come with a serious game. Like, you, you look at the players they have as well. Um, there's go it's going to be a serious. It's going to be a serious contest and it's going to be a battle and a battle in every position. And I suppose game plans as well are going to come into to play. I, 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 I tend not to get bogged down too much in game plans because if you, if you, if you go too much by a game plan, you, you're nearly, your straight jackets are around you, but it's good to have a structure there. And it's who, who has the best structure to counteract the main men. Like you look at the main men with, uh, with Crokes, well, Ronan Hayes is, is has been absolutely on fire. At the other end of the pitch for Nafina, uh, Donald Burke is the main man. 
So how I how are you going to counteract those two? If you're a Crokes man, how are you going to counteract uh Donald Burke? If you're Nafina Manager, how are you going to counteract uh Ronan Hayes? But I suppose that's the thing as well. And I'll I'll go Crokes as I probably know them better. You look you look at Crokes, they they keep Ronan Hayes quite well. Quaylon Conway is there, uh, Larkin McMullen's there. Um, there, there's loads of there, lads there that can that can take up the mantle and be the game winner. So it, it's going to be a great contest. Um, it, it is, and it's going to be interesting, even for if you're a neutral looking at it, obviously I'm going to have my Crocs hat on, but if you're a neutral looking at it, um, you'd, be, you'd be hoping for a great contest. Just a quick word on Ronan Hayes, right? He's a, a player I have massive time for. I think he has huge potential. Like, is there much that he doesn't have? Like, to me, he has an awful lot of the tools uh, to be one of the best forwards in the country. He's size, he has skill, he's a brilliant eye for goal, he's savage work rate, he's, an, he's a handful nearly in every way. Yeah, um, like, I suppose when he came on to the, the scene there, what, three, four years ago, um. He yeah, you could see that he had all those ingredients, but probably didn't didn't mesh them together. Um, uh, but now he's after getting physically strong. He's become a leader on the team. He can score from any angle, and he's he's taken on the man. He like he he knows going into every game, especially club games, that he's going to be targeted. He's going to be either someone is going to try uh hit him to put him off his game, or they're going to have the stickiest man out there to mark him. Um, I don't think that bothers him. I, I think, like, if a couple of years ago, yeah, it probably would have bothered him if he was getting that attention. But I think now he's he's embracing that. He He's kind of taking it as a compliment that, right, they're giving me extra attention. Lovely. I love that. I'm going to embrace that. And and he certainly, he, he has stood up and he has is, he is met a count every step of the way. And he has shown what he can do. He has shown what his potential is. You hear an awful lot, oh, such and such a person has potential. And I, I know you, you you hear yourself, lads coming out of minor, lads going into under 20 or 21. Oh, geez, they're brilliant. They're going to be brilliant in a couple of years. And there was that talk around Crokes as well about, about Ronan. But the difference with Ronan is he is actually, li- he's been living up to that. Um, and like, look, Saturday is going to be a massive challenge for him. He's going to get particular attention. But I, I certainly think he can stand up to it, and I, I think he can be a, he can be a game winner. Yeah, and no, I think so too. And even someone you've seen at close quarters, I think he's very like Jamie Callan in maybe some different ways, and maybe it's just because they wear a yellow helmet or something. I no, don't know. Actually, that's a very good comparison because like uh, Jamie, Jamie came out of minor. He didn't make the under twenty one, um, and then I think it was his last year under twenty one. That's when he was on the, the senior panel, um, and I suppose. Jeez, I hope he doesn't take offence to this, but for a while, and I'm just saying what other people are saying, I didn't agree with it at the time, um, but you're saying, oh yeah, like he, he likes to, to hurl, he likes to he, stand out, put a mulliker beside him, hand it out to him, and he'll put it over the bear. I didn't see that side of him, I saw someone that can win their own ball and contest, but that that's the what the tip public were saying a lot. Then you can see, two, three years after that, he was the go-to guy. He was the man who hit it down on top of Shamey. He just give it to Shamey, any type of ball at all. And he was the one that got extra attention. Um, He was the one, like I suppose, the prime example is, uh, was it the 09 final? Um, He was just about to win the ball and Jackie Terrell upended him. Like yeah. if I did that, I was straight red. <laughs> as I said. Um, but like... He stood up and he was counted for that. And if people were saying that oh, he was shying away from it or that, that was that was proof straight away that no, he can take this. He can he can mix it with the 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 big guys, you could say. And since then, the what the twelve years since then, he has more than proved it with hurlers of the year, all Ireland final medals. Um, and Ronan is they're very similar in that because if if we were having the same conversation three years ago, I'd have said. Yeah, do you know what he he had Ronan? He has to mature a bit. He has to, he has to just he has to do a bit of growing up. He has to get a bit more physical. Do you know? He, yeah, he's able to win his own ball, but do you know? I, if I was marking him, the first thing I do is I go out and I, I give him a thump, and I just know I'm in his head straight away. You can't say that about him anymore. Um, and like I said there a few minutes ago, I I think he relishes the attention that opposition will give him. Um, he relishes the the fact that. In the dressing room beforehand, they're assigning a, a specific role to someone. Right, you need to go. You need to mark Ronan, or you need to do whatever to Ronan. Um, 
and I think he's taken that he's taken it as a compliment and I, I reckon that's what he's doing um because and it's shown on the pitch um like he went out the last day against uh Keno Callahan someone that I call and I mean this is a compliment he's an absolute horrible fucker but and I mean that as a compliment he's just he's a spider monkey he's all over you um but Ronan stood up and he 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 look you, you see what he scored the last day and he and he was he he led from the front and it didn't matter who he was marking. Yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see how he goes on Saturday evening. Just a couple of uh, comments in there from a few viewers. Uh, Puka at place is a big double hurling fan. I was always a big fan of Ryan and his warrior like play style. Yeah, he was dead. You were dead. I think you should have been around in the Coliseum back in the day or something like that. Body was always on the line and head in where others wouldn't put a hurl. I, I heard him in college, so I'll attest to that. And he just said, unfortunately, it often went against him and he picked up some undeserved yellow or red cards from refs. I didn't respect the intensity that he brought. Plus, I think the game changed somewhat a bit, and some of uh, some of the more robust play was nearly outlawed uh, in in recent years, which which I don't particularly agree with. Uh, Joe Butler just said Ryan would have loved playing the Kilkenny County Championship, where the referees allowed the game to flow and swallow the whistle. E.g. Owen Behan last Sunday, uh, great great stuff. Uh, Joe had that's, in there. That's why I I love the ref from your own county, Brian Gavin. Like. He's blew the whistle at the start, blew the whistle at half time, blew the whistle at the start of the second half, blew the whistle at the end. If he could get away with that, he would have. And he he ref with common sense. Um, I see Fergal Horgan is very similar, refs with common sense. And there's a few out there that just they know I suppose they played the game and they know if something is just mistimed or something, they know if there's intent in something. Yeah. Um, uh, just a quick one from Patrick Hickey there. What county would Ryan want to manage in the future, Tip or Dublin? Good question. <laughs> Um, I suppose. Look, I'm living in Dublin. Um, I think that the tip public are very critical. Uh, that would be my. I suppose this is a different question now. My that would be my fear. Um, at the moment with Colin Bonner, I I love Colin Bonner. Um, I think he's brilliant. I think, um, I think he's going to do a great job. But there there is a little bit of a rebuild there, and you look at the age profile of the team, and I be very I'd be very worried that if there is one or two results that go against him, that the tip public will turn against Colum. Um, but uh, I, I think he's going to do a great job. If given a chance, he, and, and and if the tip public e- expect that there, there is going to be bumps along the way, I think Colum is going to be, he's going to bring tip back to back to the promised land. But it, that, the answer to that question is, I I suppose because I'm living in Dublin, and I, I suppose even though I've transferred back to Cash, I know more of the, the Dublin setup at the moment than the, the tip setup. So. We might get into tip a bit more in a minute. Colm is obviously your own club man, uh, Cash and Kilcormacks as well, which is uh, uh, an interesting one there. So you definitely have a good si- insight into him. Uh, ML89 just said an awful question here. Dublin v Tip and all Ireland final. Who are you shouting for? Now, this is, I, I'm going to put a bit more to this. You're not playing for either of them or anything like that. You're not involved with either of them. This is just Dublin and Tipperary and all Ireland final. Who are you shouting for? Um, I think the sound is broken up there. I can't hear it. Um, <laughs> Look, I, I'll always be a tip man as as long as my as long as my parents are alive. Um, Tipperary is my home. Um, if they were playing, if they were playing this this coming year in an All Ireland final, um, I don't know what Limerick people would say to that now. But if they're playing this year in the All Ireland final, I know so many lads on the Dublin team, and I I have a lot of lot of good friends still on the Dublin team. So I would. I would love to see Dublin do it because it would be so unique. It would be so such a big breakthrough for them, and it would be good for the game. Um, but at the same time, column over over uh, tip. I I'd love to see tip. I I know I I actually can't answer that question. Um, for different reasons, I'd love to see both teams win, but that can't happen. No, that's a truly awful question. There's no there's no right or wrong answer really. Yeah. Um, just go, going back to the Dublin County final, Ryan. Uh, we've talked a good bit about Crokes, obviously. What do you think Nafina bring to the table? Um, they've, you know, they've haven't been in a round of few, few semi-finals and had lots of potential. They're there now. They haven't won one. Like do you expect, uh, you wouldn't like you have a good bit of final experience. Crokes do, but and Nafina are coming in maybe inexperienced, but they're also coming in maybe with the shackles off. They've gotten the monkey off the back of bit semi-final defeats. Like, what are you expecting from them Saturday evening? I'm expecting a great performance from them. Um, and it's easy to say that, but uh, I suppose the reason I'm saying that is you're saying, right, there's 
there is inexperience there. And yeah, there is. As a, as a unit, as a team, there's a lot of inexperience there playing the county final. But like, if you in the county senior final, but if you go back, they won, I think, four or five minors in a row, four or five. That, then as that team progressed, they won four or five under 21 titles in a row. So they have experience of playing on a, on a big stage. Now, not a senior county title. This is the, uh, Nafina's first ever senior county title or county final. So it, it's brilliant for them to be in that position. I think what they can bring so much and, and kind of, I suppose, throw away the the expectations and throw away the the worry or the, the big occasion is they have a man centre back for them that I will go to war with. I think he he's been the last ten twelve years <coughs> he's been one of the best hurlers in the count in the country if if not in the top two or three anyway. In in that's in my view, uh, Liam Rush right he he joined them this year. When he joined Nafina, I said, right, he'd be, be to be worth throwing a bit of money on him uh, to win the county final. Now, they've got there. I'm not saying they're going to win it, but he's going to steady the ship there. He has played in uh, on big occasions. He's had expectation on his shoulders because I know he was part of a team. But you look at the Dublin team through the early 2010s up to recent times. The first player you think of is Liam Rush. Like he, I, no, I, maybe I'm being biased. I think he's the he's the best player that Dublin has ever produced. Not by not just hurling wise, but just pure leadership wise and pure, just a, a steady head. Um, so I think he will will steady the ship. I think he'll have a massive input even in the discussion. But I I know the way he works. The discussion in the dressing room beforehand. The discussion in for training sessions leading up to it and he'll be leading by example and he he's a real he's a rock in the center defense and i i suppose look in in the croaks dressing you're going to have to be you're he's going to have to come up i know i spoke earlier about uh donald burke but rush is going to have to come up in the conversation how do we how do we limit his influence because you, you won't take away his influence but how do we limit his influence in the game because if you're landing a puck out on him, he's he's going to win it. He's going to clear everything around him. He will win it. Um, even though he has pushed on in a couple of years, if the ball is delivered over his head and it's in the full back line, he's going to get back there first. And if the ball it drops short and lands in the half forward line, he's going to be out there. Like he he's still going. He's going to get around. And I suppose that's as you get older you nearly have to do less running because your head has an idea where the ball is going to be and he's going to he's going to bring that and he's going to really lead by example and i think look i don't mind putting weight on his shoulders because he he's he's carried teams down through the years but there's going to be expectations on his shoulders and if if he can really lead and 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 just lead by example but also carry lads around him and even if they are down a point or two do that inspirational catch or if the ball is in a huddle, he comes out with it. I think he's going to be the the winner of the game. And just on that as well, um, he's obviously had a couple of injuries in recent years. Was there any doubt in your head that he would come back to the level that he has with Dublin and even with with Nafina this oh, year? I've I've never had a doubt at all. Um, like he was played full forward for a couple of years, and I I just think that I I don't know what way to say it. I I don't think that got the best out of him. Yeah, obviously I'd love him in full forward, but I think. He adds so much to the team, centre back, that I just think you don't take him out of there. Um, he leads. He's he's a he's a pivotal. He's the foundation of the team when he's centre back. Um, whereas when he's in full forward, yeah, hit the ball in. Doesn't matter. Goes in high, low. It doesn't matter what type of ball goes in. He'll win it and he'll create goal chances. But I just think you're you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and I just think the, the centre back is the most important position on the team, and it doesn't matter who's centre forward. He's he's going to come out on top. Yeah. Any any particular matchup you're looking forward to Ryan in this game? Go through the Crokes team. I'm a big fan of Eddie Gibbons in the goals, I have to say. Uh Bill O'Carroll, very, very good yeah. defender, as is Keen McGowan. Ushin O'Rourke, I think having him out around the middle of the field is good. It gives him more space to operate in. Yeah, yeah, certainly he's not he's not restricted in the full forward line. Yeah. And I suppose you look the last ten years or well, eight years, anyway, he's been playing corner forward. Um, near the end of the game might come out in the wing but I think out around the middle field I think is great because he can float around he can pick up the ball and he can score from distance as well the the battle I'm looking forward to the most now if if they play him centre back um, is Bill O'Carroll and Donald Burke 
Um, like Donald Burke is going to be centre forward for Nafina. Um, it will be interesting what they do, whether they put someone else on Donald or whether they put Bill on Donald. Um, because he he won't want to stay centre forward. He's going to pull out towards midfield. If Bill pulls out, is the basically does he follow him or does he sit and leave someone else pick him up? And it's about the communication there. That that's the the key matchup that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, probably because I, I I'm I'm lucky. I played with both of them and I know what both of them uh, can bring to it. But that that's certainly the one I'm looking forward to the most. Um, yeah, and look, there, there's a few battles around there. Um, it will be interesting to see. I suppose these aren't key matchups. These are, are are players that I'm kind of interested to see what they're going, what what the management teams are going to do with them. Is Larkin McMullen? He was named corner forward. Is he going to play corner forward? Is he going to pull out around midfield? Like I think he won a blue star midfield. Um, so what what are they going to do with him? Um, what are they going to do? With, uh, Quail on Conway, Fergal Whiteley. Is Fergal going to play midfield? Is Fergal going to play in the half forward line? So the, there is a few key. Um, there's a few key questions to ask there. Uh, AJ Murphy, I think he was corner forward last night for Nafina. Is he going to play out in the wing? Um, yeah, there's, there's, there is a, there is a good few matchups. Um, actually, one matchup that really stands out is uh, OD for um, for Nafina. Is a like he 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 likes attacking from wing back. He's on the Dublin panel. Is he going to pick up uh, Quail on Conway? Um, Quill on will probably be wing forward. It'll be interesting to see who comes out on top in that. In my head, I kind of think that that Nafina will be the ones worrying about the matchups a little bit more. And I think a few things, a few more things, have to go right for Nafina as opposed to Crokes. Um, and I think Crokes will just edge it. How taking your heart out, out of this one and kind of call it with your head? How do you see it going in the in the heat of the hunt? Um, if I call a winner, I'm going to say Crokes, and that has nothing got to do with the fact that I I, I hurled for Crokes, um, and that I have a lot of friends in Crokes. I I admire Nafina, I I respect Nafina for what they have done, but you look at the players that Crokes have. If if Crokes got five injuries at their last training session tonight or tomorrow night, whenever they're training, and five lads had to step in, it's not it's not weakening the team, or it's not weakening it much. Um, they have such a, a panel, and you see the the senior the Crook senior bees are in the county final this weekend as well. So they're they're strength in depth there, and like there's nobody on the on the senior A panel that is on the senior B panel. Like they, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a totally different panel. So like you sure, know, and of course it is. You have about ten thousand members. How would it not be? <laughs> I have. It's all about the promoting the game, um, but like so, it, it's it shows the strength and depth in the club. And oh yeah, look, I suppose it is a numbers game as well when you see the numbers coming through. Um, like for example, I, I was bringing my young lad out to the nursery out there. Now I I don't live anywhere near Crooks. So I I, I, I well, I'm good. If there's no traffic, I'm a good 10, 15 minutes away from it. Uh, if there is traffic, I'm about four hours away from it. Um. <laughs> But uh, I used to bring my young lad out to the nursery there, and it was great. He enjoyed it. But every Saturday he'd be meeting someone new, and like the the following Saturday he he he'd be friends with someone. And the following Saturday he wouldn't even see that kid because there was so many there. I think there was one hundred and seventy four boys in the two thousand thirteen age group. Um, so I got him involved in the the because actually it was after the nursery one morning I went to the shop and he met a young lad that's in his class and oh you were training yeah I was training and. Oh, I was training with Kill McCoy. And the young lad looked at him, what? Who's Kill McCoy? And and then I kind of suppose I did a bit of investigating. I saw that there's a lot of work going on in the club here. St. Kevin's Killings, they're in uh, in uh, Kingswood and Kilnamana there in Tala. And uh, so I got Oshin involved in that. And he, he's really gone on from strength to strength because um, he knows everyone at training. Like there's nine, boy, nine or ten boys from his class on the team. Now, there's only we only have 30 three boys it's a big difference from 174 but they all know each other they're all from the same area there's there's two schools where they're in there's even it's either Kev, uh saint saint kevin's over in kilnamana or saint killian's here in kingswood but they all know each other they're all it's not a case of so many so i suppose going back to that that i kind of got sidetracked there going back to that yeah the the numbers in croaks are phenomenal but there's you're going to have a drop off because you're going to have your distractions of your rugby, your soccer, your life, whatever gets in the way, and you drop out. But yeah, I think with sheer numbers coming through, by probability, you're you're going to have uh, 
better players to pick from because you have bigger numbers. Yeah, no, that's a hundred percent. Yeah, just a comment in there from Garodo or Gracon. Could Crokes beat Kula twice before the final play against him? Uh, it's what seemed to happen then. Oh, sorry, he said basically because Crokes beat them in the group and beat them in the semi final, and he's wondering if that would play against him. I think I kind of said at the area it'd be interesting. It would be it would be disastrous for them not to win the final, having having be, beaten Kula yeah. twice already. Being yeah. the rivals, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think they will. I think they'll have learned from the past, and even lads that weren't there. I think they like lads that weren't on the panel. Then I think they'll be reminded that right, this is a semi final. No one gets anything for winning the semi final. Um, it's the final that matters. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Just moving on to tip. Obviously, Ryan, uh, you were involved with Cashel this year in the Seamus Arena, which we might get on to in a second. But I'm sure you have a fairly intimate knowledge of, of the senior hurling championship and tip, and are following it very closely. Uh, really, Mount Water and final on Sunday live on TG Carter from uh, from the Good Field, from Tom Semple's Field, Lockmore Castellani against Turles Sarsfields. Um, uh, just a quick word on on Lockmore. Uh, just a phenomenal outfit. Yeah, they like, do what they're doing. I, I think they should be the benchmark for every club in the country. Like they for hurling and football. Like they, it's getting to a stage in I suppose you could say ninety eight percent of uh of, of clubs in the country that oh no, we're either a hurling club or a football club. We'll play the other one, but we won't give much effort. It has to be either hurling or football. And then you see the likes of Schlockneil. Uh, now I know they got better at the weekend there in in the Derry Championship, but you see them and they they've been contesting ulcers in both hurling and football. You see see a lot more in the county final for hurling and football. Like they they're they're phenomenal to be to to be associated with to know a few lads off of that team. You you just admire them so much because they go to training. They don't know whether they're going to train hurling, whether they're going to train football. They just go with their gear. We might do. I will do. 20 minutes football, we'll do 40 minutes hurling tonight, whatever the case may be. And it's great. And it just shows that you can achieve both. But I think the main thing is communication. It it will only work if there's communication between the hurling, between the football. Probably if the same person's over the hurling and football might be might be beneficial as well. But um, yeah, the communication between both has, has to be vital. And it's not that, oh, well, no, we're the football and we want them, or we're the hurling and we want them. Um, cause that, just, that's just a battle then. And the player themselves just, they fall between two stools and neither team get, get the best out of them. So I think, I think it's brilliant when, when they work together. I think they've 12 dual players. I think this is their 15 consecutive weekend in a row. And they do have the same manager. Frankie McGrath is managing them. He'd be an uncle of, uh, of Noel and John. And I believe Mick Dempsey, who was with Kilkenny, uh, is involved with them as well. Not too sure if that that's hurling or football or or both, but he'd be the ideal man probably, probably to be both, taking yeah. both of them. Yeah. Um. Just a, a quick one on on uh, like comparing. Like we've got two really really illustrious sets of brothers going against each other, and we'll just keep it in twos for the moment. There are obviously three McGraths with with uh, Noel, John, and Brian. But we just keep it between Noel and John coming you up. You could go families and all the McGraths. Yeah. Kieran McGrath, Brian, like there's, there's loads of McGraths there. There's loads of them. Just if we're talking about the two brothers, so Noel and John going up against the two matters in, in Paddy and and Ronan. Like that, that is going to be intriguing and they're probably going to pick each other up at different stages. John is probably going to be in full forward a bit. He's probably going to park, is probably going to pick him up. Noel could be centre forward. Ronan could be picking him up. Like whoever wins probably those duels or whoever gets the upper hand between the two sets of brothers is going to have a massive. Uh, it's going to have a massive say who who wins the title here. Yeah, and and like they they know each other so well, not not just from playing each other most years in the the mid championship or the county championship, but then I I'd say they they know everything about themselves about each other from inter county training as well. I'm sure. Right, we're talking about them coming up against each other this weekend. I'm sure between club and at county training they probably marked each other and coming up through the age groups they probably marked each other over a couple of hundred times um so yeah they, so they're going to know everything about each other they're going to know what way they ca- catch it you're going to know like if i'm if i'm in the forward if i'm no regret i know what way uh Parg is going to attack the ball from behind i know what way he's going to try catch the ball so it's going to be it's going to be like a game of chess there at times um and they'll, they'll also know how to put each other off their game. So, like, right, I'm, if I'm uh, in on Parag Mare, well, right, he mightn't like 
being pulled way out of position. Um, he mightn't like being out of his comfort zone there where he's full back and, and, and he knows everything. He, when the ball is coming in, he knows how to protect the goal. Um, so it's going to be, it is going to be like a game of chess and, and back to back to your structure, back to your game plan. How am I going to disrupt the, the opposition? Um, yeah, no, yeah, it's going to be really intriguing. One of the players that has probably stepped up for Turles this year is Paddy Creedon, who was in on the, the Tip yeah. Football panel. And we just have a little video clip here now from Tipcast where Conor O'Brien is talking about Paddy Creedon's influence on Turles Sarsfields this year. Should be coming any minute. My technology man in the Creedon background is should a, have a serious York. A serious York. And um, uh, he's, you can see he's just playing more and more hurling the whole time. You know what I mean? And, um, uh, I think even with the twenties this year, he he he's come on so much since that, and whether that has given him the confidence and uh, or what, I don't know. But um, I just saw him even against all look at Jesus, they they they, they bit us out the gate. But every time he got the ball, he all he wanted to do was take you on, take you on, take you on, and That's um, a nightmare for any Mm-hmm. Yeah, it reminded me of John, it reminded me of John McGrath. Do you know what I mean? Um, 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 oh, when I used to be marking him was there, when I was finishing up, and just all I wanted to do was the minute he got the ball, take you on, take you on, and he's you he, he, he see the difference between maybe the Sayers of last year, say maybe not getting to a semi final and a final and winning it, and maybe to this year, I, I think he could be, you know, because he's just he's asking that question of a defender the whole time, and if he's not. And because he has the the four rudder buys, um, you know the the, the stake lums, um, you know Aidan McCormick, Pay popping off the shoulder, and you know if a fella if it turns around and takes you on, there's only two options: either you foul him, all right, or if you're good enough to hold him out, then they have the three or four buys who are coming off the shoulder, asking the question of the other backs, and, and it's opening it up for Sayers. you know. And Dennis Maher is the same. In fairness, Dennis has been is if Dennis is not winning it, there is breaks and there is loads of breaks. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Tip have uh, or Sars have some amount of lads that can hurt you across yeah, across, yeah. The, across the forward line. I suppose an interesting question is going to be Brian McGrath missed the semi final because of a broken thumb. His availability will be huge because he could potentially pick up one of those dangerous yeah, forwards, be it a Cormac or someone. I only heard there uh, actually to my nephew. He's up for the the Irish soccer match this evening, so he's downstairs at the moment. Um, and he was, I was saying, come here, have you heard that? Because I knew it was coming on this. I said, here, give me some information I can I can spout on about. Um, so I, and I asked him specifically about Brian McGrath, and he said, look, I, I've heard it, 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 it's touch and go at the moment. Um, now, that's only hearsay, and he's only going from what he hears as well. But uh, I think if he's out, that's going to be a, that, that's going to be a kick in the teeth for a lot more straight away, um, and a massive, massive loss. If he is there... Well, straight away, that gives them a boost. That gives everyone a boost because all the lot more brilliant in hurling and football, they don't have a pick of thirty lads. Do you know thirty lads that won't weaken the team? Um, if you and especially if you're losing someone like Brian McGrath, it's it's going to severely weaken the team. Any team, no matter what team it is. Um, going, but you were talking about uh, Creedon there. Um, his father actually taught me in school. And he was also manager the the tip minor footballers when I played with them. So look, I, I when I saw his name coming on, I said, "Geez, he's bound to be a big, huge like his father. He's just a big, strong man." And yeah, he is. And like, he's only is he twenty yet? Yeah, he's only around, in around twenty. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's built like a twenty five year old or twenty six. Yeah, he's yeah. just a big, big, strong individual. But like, can move as well, can turn, and is a phenomenal hurler as well. Um. Yeah, as long as as long as Cork don't claim him because of the, the parentage rule. Uh, I can't see that now somehow. Not tipping Cork, it was somewhere else, no. maybe possibly. Um how do you see this one going, Ryan? Obviously, Sars had the experience up until recent years, they were the dominant force in Tipperary and were winning county titles at their leisure sometimes. They've struggled to win one obviously since twenty seventeen, haven't been back in a final since then, to the best of my knowledge. Lockmore at uh, Lockmore's last title was a few years before that. How do you see this going? Right, well, it, there's, there's two ways I'm looking at this, right? lot more could win this by pure momentum. That every week, they're not getting bogged down on, on hurling, 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 hurling. It's hurling right now. Focus, switching to football. And, and like that saying, a change is as good as a break. Do you know? So they're changing all the whole time. It's like you're starting something new all over again. Um, so momentum is going to be a big key for them. 
if Brian McGrath is there, I think that that's going to play a big role, right? For for Sars, I think a key thing for Sars is going to be Creedon. Um, and I know I spoke earlier when I was talking about the, the Dublin County final, the, the weight of expectation on Ronan Hayes' shoulders, but also weight of expectation weight of expectation on Liam Rush's shoulders. It's ne- it's unfair at times to be putting such expectations on a young lad's shoulders when he's about 19 or 20 with Creedon. And especially when you look at the other players that are on the team, the household names like Ronan Mayer, Paddy Mayer, Pa Burke, um, McCormick, I got named, Jesus, I've named seven or eight lads there. But I do think he is going to be a game breaker here. And I think if he if he plays the way he can play, and even if a good few of the, the Sars lads play poor, but he plays the way he can play, I think Sars can win this. And, and I, win, yeah. win it by a couple of points. Okay, I think Lockmore could ground them down, and I don't think there'd be too much free flow on hurling, and I think they might just get over the line. I have to say, I'd on love Lockmore, to see Lockmore yeah, win. I'd love to see on Lockmore, been beaten in two county finals last year, both in fairly heartbreaking fashion. To be back in yeah. two county finals again is just unbelievable for them. Just a quick word, uh, Ryan, on the, the Seamus O'Reen Cup, uh, which you obviously played in this year. Uh, county final is on at the weekend as well. It's killing all against Temple Derry Kenyans. Uh, you were probably on the wrong end of a, a, probably a hard semi final defeat oh, well against Temple, Temple Derry. Um, how do you see this going? Uh, bubbles of the wire, obviously, on the killing all side. Probably Tom Stapleton, people would remember from his Tipperary days on the Temple Derry side. In a, in a couple of words, how do you see this going? Well, from a personal point of view, I, I'd love to see Temple Derry win well because it would make us feel a little bit better. The form would be frank, yeah. Yeah, instead because we got walloped in the semi final, just boost our ego anyway. Um, I think it's going to be a titanic struggle um, for both teams because if you, if, if, Either team doesn't play to 100%. Even if they play 95%, the other team are going to uh, expose that. Um, if I have to pick a winner to make this short, if I have to pick a winner, it's going to be Temple Derry. Um, I, I do think uh, Kilnall, they can bring physicality to it. They can bring hurling to it. Um, great scores. You see some of the players they have, but I just think, probably because they walloped us in the semi-final, but I, I do think uh, Temple Derry um, will win it. Like they have a few, a few great forwards there. You see, Garod Ryan was was brilliant the last day, and uh, yeah, I just think Temple Derry will get over the line. Garod Ryan, obviously, who was who was brilliant for for tip back in the day, and was one of the key players in two thousand and ten, wasn't he at wing forward? Yeah, uh, when they when they, they stopped the five in a row. Uh, Ryan, thanks a million for jumping on today. I really appreciate it, and uh, enjoy the soccer tonight, and try and stay out of trouble for a few weeks, and keep the bandages off. No water, no water. Cheers, right, Ryan. Thanks, thanks a million. 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 Good man. Happy Cheers, Ryan. Thank, thank you. Uh, I think we're joined now by Philip Lanigan of the Irish Daily Mail. Phil, how are you? How are you doing, Michael? Good, good, good. Uh, just chatting to Ryan, Ryan the Wire there. One of the great, uh, one of the great war horses of the game. He's uh, he's in bandage and everything, which uh, which we probably should have expected. Uh, just a quick word uh, for anyone just to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Uh, there's a button there just down to the right of Phil at the bottom corner of the screen. If you press that, subscribe to our game and turn on your tough push notifications, and you'll get notification about any time we're going live or any time there's any show or any content coming up. Um, and obviously the Patreon is available as well. It's five euro per month, so you can listen at your leisure. Um, you don't have to be watching on YouTube. You can just listen at your leisure whether you're out for a walk or run or exercising or anything you're doing. And just a reminder that we're sponsored by, uh, this show is sponsored by Torpy Bamboo. Use the promo code OURGAME to get 10% off. Uh, Phil, we're just going to talk about the, the Clare Harlem final at the weekend. A fairly, well, a novel enough pairing in the sense that Ina Kilnamona are a relatively new club. They're coming up against Ballier. In truth, could could you have predicted that Ballier would be in a final minus Tony Kelly? Well, I think looking at the last day, the way he's nearly their 16th member as a coach, he definitely looks like he has a, a future in coaching ahead of him uh, when the playing career ends. So I, I don't know. He still has that presence. Um, uh, like, uh, and he's clearly so important to the whole setup. So, look, I, I think, you know, they went so close previously between Munster Club and All-Ireland that, like, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they be here? Um, 
And I think, again, they, they showed the last time that they're clearly, they've lots of characters, strength of character, but guys like Gary Brennan still really leading the charge, you know? So when you've got figures like that, um, kind of inspirational guys who've kind of done us previously, you know, why, why wouldn't they? Yeah, and I think they've got four forwards in their. I think they've got four forwards in their in their attack, or four forwards from from eight up. In Gary Brennan, uh, his younger brother, they've Pierce Lillis as well, Carl O'Connor, which kind of come into their own around this time of the year. They're coming up against uh, an Ina Kilimona side who had a really good win against Aero Guinness, who subsequently went on and won the football title, beating Kilmurray at Bricken last weekend. But just Shane had a nice quote here from Joe Merkadig and the formation of Ina Kilnamona. And he just said, the decision to join together and form one club goes back to the early 2000s when both Ina and Kilnamona were struggling to field teams underage. There was a chat between the two clubs and it was agreed that we would field as Ina Kilnamona when the clubs didn't have the numbers. Winning the under-21 20 title, under 21 title as Ina Kilnamona in 2007 was really the catalyst for the new club. We beat a new market team going for four in a row by a point. It was an accumulation of circumstances at the time, numbers being the main one. But the bit of success as an amalgamation was the other thing that drove it on. We formed one club after that. I think it's something we're probably going to see an awful lot more of just with numbers and, you know, with particularly rural clubs finding it harder to field. And it's it's great that rivalries or whatever were able to be put aside and they're in a county final, you know, just well, about 15 years after their formation. It is, particularly you know how club rivalries are, like trying to get rival parishes <laughs> to join together or or lads, you know, who've been trying to kill each other for, for you know, years previously. I don't know, maybe um, Ryan mentioned the, the thousands, the, the young kids, like unless they're going to send a bus from Kilmacud or South Dublin down to uh, down to Clare or along the, the western seaboard, you know, it's going to be hard to balance the, the, the numbers because clearly, like we've all seen, the numbers game is huge now. Um, you see Nace as well uh, flying us or uh, hurling in football. Um, obviously, south side dominance was only due to piece there for Wednesday, just about the south side dominance um, in Dublin. And again, I think clearly linked to the to the numbers like Bally Bowden came along. Um, I remember a time when south side hurling teams were seen meant to be seen as a bit soft and suddenly came along and won five in a row and clearly the likes of Kilma could have, have continued that. So like with, with Claire for a, for a, a new club to come along um, and be here, like that's it's an incredible story, really. And I, geez, the end game of the, the semi final was was incredible with Patrick Kelly, the, the penalty save. So you couldn't have it couldn't have been scripted in more dramatic terms. Yeah, high drama. Uh, Aidan McCarthy actually came off in that semi-final, but I believe he played for Kilmurray Bricken in the football last weekend. There was talk of a hamstring injury, so if he's available, which it seems like he is, that could be, that's a, a, obviously a massive, massive boost for them. They'd have Jason McCarthy as well, who we'd all know from Ireland's fitness family and from being involved with the Clare squad as well. And they would obviously have Patrick Kelly in goals, Cottle McInerney. Um, and then on the uh, on the Ballier side of things, in Tony Kelly's absence, you're pro they're probably looking, really looking to Niall DC, Gary Brennan, Pierce Lillis. They have Jack Brown in defence, Paul Flanagan in defence as well. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting one. It would be some statement. I would probably rank it up there with the time Bally Hale won Kilkenny minus Cha and minus Henry with. Uh, Cruciate injury, maybe two cruciates, or Cha was definitely missing as well because I know we beat them in Leinster after. If Ballier can win a Clare title without Tony Kelly, it's it's a massive accomplishment. It, absolutely, you know, because again, it always when Tony Kelly plays so well, it gets thrown at him with club and county that it's kind of a one man forward line at times, a one man team, which like it's so unfair on what's going on around him because the best teams, the best club and county teams know how to find their best players and kind of play them in all the time and kind of function that chemistry between him and the rest of his club mates is key to how we perform so so look yeah it'd be it'd be a huge achievement and i guess no more than the again you brian was chatting about the dublin county final claire you've that's uh, you've got the kind of the rookie team coming along that the, the with such confidence on, on momentum against maybe a proven campaigner so um it's hard to know whether the baggage you know, that lack of baggage for a new team coming in, it can often, you know, the first time they always say, like, when you're there, the first time, just go and win it. You know, we don't need this past history of being beaten in finals. You know, players, I think when it happens, they like to cling to that and say, oh, we have the experience. But I don't know how that really helps you, you know, come along, yeah. no baggage, just go and win it. 
Uh, just an interest in Phil, just moving away from that. Maggie Farley refereeing the Cavan final at the weekend, female referee. This is a massive novel kind of story, and it's a great sign of progress within the GA. It is, yeah. Um, again, just doing a, doing a piece from tomorrow, but like it's been a, a mixed week for refereeing. You see that landmark, you know, clearly a, a landmark step for the GA. Um, and listening to her, she says she's kind of clearly there on merit. She's done the junior and intermediate final. So this is the, the kind of natural step for her. But like we're in the middle of a, a referee in crisis this week in soccer and even in previously in GA, even Kieran Leddy recently in Munster was talking about how numbers are a huge problem um, because in part because of the success of, of Gaelic games with the amount of participating teams and clubs. But there is always that um, uh, running crisis within sporting organisations of refs and how we, we get them. So even Maggie herself was talking, listen to her on um, Ray Darcy show, just talking about the the abuse that it's almost a kind of accepted norm in um as part of refereeing i think i think the, there's maybe more of a lower limit in soccer to kind of not allow that abuse take place at all because i just think if you take some of the soccer rest and throw them into a, a local ga game they might they might find it a next level kind of all together you know so look it's it's huge huge for her and 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 clearly She's determined to kind of said, look, it's 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 kind of not about me anymore. It should be just about how ref the game. So look, um, I'm actually going up that way at the weekend. So it'll be, um, hopefully, it'll, it'll all go well. No, it's that it is no more than Rachel Blackmore in, in racing. Hopefully, that will become the norm, and you'll have the like, no more uh, Bryony Frost winning rig races as a jockey. Uh, Rachel now, and hopefully, you'll have Maggie Farley is the first of many referees. There is a bit of an issue there, though, as you said about the the availability of referees, and I think I do have to, I have to say I think I do think referees their authority has often been undermined, like. This is not just. This is just giving this an example. But uh, say Alan McNamee was sent off for road in the Offaly County final, and I'm not saying whether he should have been sent off or whether he shouldn't have been sent off. But the referee made the decision on the day, and then as we've seen, like so many times, you go through an appeal process, and the referee's decision is ripped up almost, and now he's fit to play. And I'm not get, saying that that is right or, or wrong in that particular case, but it doesn't help when referees' authority has been undermined if they make a decision. You know, you have, you know, I think authorities have to stand over that decision a bit more. How many times have we seen at a county level where someone makes a decision? Uh, what was the one of the most recent ones? Wasn't there a high profile one during the football or hurling championship near near the end of it, I think? Yeah, there was actually a very interesting interview. I think Sean Moran did one at the weekend. He's talked to James Owens, was the Aidan McCarthy one who we talked yep. about earlier in hurling, like that the, the black card rule, which he felt he was implementing to the rule of law. But he said um, and then Connor Lane, the, the John Small, you know, in real time, you know, I was there watching it. And no more than anybody, it was very hard to, to, to figure it out in real time. It kind of, you know, it's instinctively it kind of went, oh, was it, a, was it a legitimate hit? And then you see the replay and it, cha it changes everything. So, like, um, the two lads, though, admitted that the nature of the online, now the, the social media element has kind of added such a toxic element to the public national refereeing that th both of those who were hugely experienced referees just said the fallout was massive for them on a personal level right down to impacting on on jobs so unfortunately you have that now whatever about local uh, a, a few locals kind of shouting at you on the national stage you know you have that spotlight now that is kind of very personal and very um, very direct and kind of continues you know I'm sure as a ref when you see your name trending like well, that's that's not a good thing you know no definitely not I've often thought about doing a bit of refereeing and uh, you know you think about it and you think it might be okay and then I was doing linesman for a couple of recent games down in St Brendan's Park and Borough and you just you get abused no matter you could be the nicest person in the world and make all the correct decisions and you're still going to get abused so referees in fairness to them and we give out about them and you might you know contest the decision but it is one of the most thankless jobs it is it's really tough I've actually a young fellow who's gone through the young whistlers here in, in Mead and in fairness and um, this was part of the problem previously that the GA didn't do a whole lot to kind of really encourage the next generation to get involved and take underage games even and sure he did that you know and enjoyed it um did a load of matches never any problem he did one just about six weeks ago and it was uh, i think it was under 12 or 13 football just out of goal games and i kind of said to him ah grand 
go on down to your handy 40 quid, you know, like 20 quid from both both teams. Um, so they're actually, again, they're looking after refs, kind of making it worth their while. But I, I came home and he was sitting there a bit sheepish and said, how'd you get on? He said, oh, match abandoned. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so, yeah, like, uh, uh, seriously, there was a bit of a row, uh, turned into a bit of a melee. Uh, the other team were leading, I think, by about 10 goals. It's, again, underage um, thing. Don't know what was at stake. So he kind of... He, he blew it up early and ended up getting, he said, a bit of a dog's abuse from the opposition sideline who wanted to play on and beat them by more than 10 goals, you know. So, nice. so it's kind of generally, most of the time, it's it's the kids um, are really the, the issue. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of what comes from the sideline. No, without a doubt. I think, I think what you mentioned about soccer and probably rugby as well, we do need to enforce... Uh, I suppose better etiquette towards referees even in an exclusion zone around referees you shouldn't be able to go in on top of a referee and you know almost intimidate them and I think with underage games in particular uh, the amount of people that should and nearly everybody should be in the stand barring you know the couple of officials on the side and that would probably make it easier as well yeah now, now there is there the, you know there's kind of the counter argument as well like what frustrates players and you know you know playing like like bad refereeing and bad decisions is you know, I think it's it's unfair. This give respect, get respect. It has to go both ways because, like, players are the ones putting in massive effort. And if guys are coming along who aren't really doing a good job, aren't able to keep up with play, you know, aren't fit to be there, and um, maybe are gone past their sell by date, you know, because again, you know, the next generation, it's very hard to recruit. And um, at times, like, that's what frustrating. And again, I've seen it loads of times where. You know, referees won't engage um, at all if, if there's genuine questions. And again, a friend saw an underage relegation game where he he shouted him from the sideline. The ref, it turned out, had got the scoreline wrong. You know, so at half time, I think they'd asked the scoreline, and he had the wrong score, and, and that was shouted in. Ref, will you check your score? The wrong score. So he was red carded out of here, going. So no, and and it was proven afterwards the ref had the wrong score. So you know there has to be that kind of you know I've seen too many often where players actually don't get the respect at times from officials in terms of how they deal. And we know the best refs always have that really good way of kind of dealing with players um, and kind of getting judging the flow of, of a game. Yeah, I think uh, I, I know some people were saying that the Kilkenny referee swallowed the whistle uh, last Sunday, but. In fairness, it definitely looked like when he blew for a free that he was explaining to the players what the free was blown for. I think a lot of the time is when you ask a question to a referee, if you if you say something derogatory to a referee, you deserve to be yellow carded, the ball brought forward or whatever. But just ask a question and for it to be answered. I think the respect does go on both sides, in, in fairness. As Absolutely. You said. I think, though, last week if there was a free, it was probably for a loss of limb. You know, <laughs> it was a great <laughs> match, though. Yeah, it does. It does play into it. Does play into probably a better quality of game. But in fact, the referee thing is probably something we need to look at more. We need more referees, and I think we're going to have to look at, as you say, uh, maybe just giving them a bit, giving more respect on both sides. And I think well, that would help. Just the, the pathway, genuinely, that pathway. The young whistlers again. I would have thought is is the key to it for counties because if you get a, um, it's you would think from the sideline, you know, there'd be a bit more respect and a, a latitude given to. You know, young players who actually are playing the game, who are refereeing um, up to, you know, again, without up to a certain level where the stakes aren't that high. So they're kind of learning their trade. So definitely. And if you want the next generation, because unfortunately, like you really you need to really, uh, you know, you need to be very thick skinned to take it on in the first place. So you need to make it as, as kind of encourage as many, you know, the next generation. And we say ex players are always the way to go because they understand the game. Just a, an interesting comment from Sean O'Sullivan, and I do think this would work. He said he has a friend who refs underage soccer. He often sent off a parent on more than one occasion. Uh, and if the parent didn't go, he'd blow up the game and the kids would uh, concede the match. It soon ends it. I do think that there might be some teething problems with you know enforcing rules. But once, it's, once it happened once, like it would be madness for it to happen again like so you'd imagine there might be some teething problems it might there might be the odd game or two abandoned the odd parent might have their nose put out a joint but i think if you just tow a hard line and follow that kind of at least we have rules it's something that we abide by yeah yeah maybe so um but again i've seen it locally here we the not plays for the local soccer team and again there was a match ref blew up early because someone had, you know there was there was an incident but like We've seen there's a load of games. There's I think there's over ten thousand players affected this weekend, and clearly it's a really important issue that kind of has to be got right. But there is this thing as well of like the games are so important. We're coming through a pandemic, physical exercise. You know you have, um, it's so important. And if you 
you know, we need, you know, the games program is actually more important than ever right now. So clearly we have, they have to find a way of balancing it, the respect for officials with a, a functioning games program. So you'd hate, there is talk of that nationwide strike, even with soccer. And again, you know, you don't want to disenfranchise a, a lot, a lot of the players for the behavior of typically of, of, of others, you know, around the sidelines. So no, look, particularly it's, it's, having been off for so long. Just absolutely. one quick one. You you mentioned about some referees maybe that aren't up to it anymore. Uh, we used to have one referee in Offaly, and if you if you question the decision, he wouldn't even bring the ball up. He just kicked the ball up, and wherever <laughs> wherever the ball stopped was where the free would take place. Could be thirty yards, could be forty yards, depending on the degree of his kick. But uh, we probably all have some good referee stories from down through the years. And um, just looking at the goal we've seen the hurling championship, Phil, uh, semi final refixture this weekend. I know there's a bit of there's definitely a few noses put out a joint. It's been fixed for twelve o'clock on Sunday and the football final I believe is fixed for half one so it's an impossibility to make both fixtures now which is far from ideal uh, there was obviously there was a co- uh, COVID issues last week that's why the game was mm. uh, was postponed and it allowed Henry Shefflin to uh, get back and watch uh, the Shamrocks playing in Nolan Park which he was probably happy of in a roundabout way the the winners will play Claren Bridge in the final Claren Bridge had a big win over, over Crockwell last week uh, Thomas's probably have a bit of unfinished business, would it be fair to say, outside of Galway. But when the, when the potential is that you have your eye taken off that and you're looking too far ahead, they could get caught. I think they're going for four in a row in Galway. But this is uh, this is definitely a banana skin. And the, uh, like regardless of all the talent they have at their disposal, all the Burks and the Coonies, they'll definitely have to be on guard here. Um, definitely. Um, and particularly, like you say, the disruption to championships, Things are very tricky, you know, with, with COVID and, and different things going on. So, look, you, you'd like to, for Thomas, I'm sure um, the bigger picture is there. But, um, and they'd be looking at the likes of, like, how do you keep that hunger and drive them? And you mentioned Henry Shefflin, like Bally Haler, another lesson in just um, coming back time and time again. So, I'm sure if, if you were in that dressing room and kind of wondering where you get the motivation for, like, last, last Sunday would be the perfect representation of just how you keep going the same hunger and drive and this the Nile Rigney was very interesting on you on the show kind of talking about you know the secret to su- sustained success not just kind of one off so I, and I think Thomas has had that they're, they're they're so experienced being around the block that um, I think they they know that same recipe of, of kind of avoiding complacency um, and keeping that hunger. So Their ability to, to eke out results in Galway is phenomenal in fairness yeah. to them. And obviously a lot of players are on show to, to Henry Shefflin um, and they're on show in championship games. So Colin Bonner, I just see this morning, has uh, kind of reignited an interesting uh, kind of trial in Tipperary. So Shane Brophy, the Nina Garden, just tweeted this morning, Tipperary manager Colin Bonner is reigniting the Miller Shield to assess players for his panel. Over 80 players from the South, North, Mid and West Divisions play each other over three consecutive weekends starting uh, Saturday, 20th November, and all games will be open to the public. Uh, isn't this, uh, like, there's no excuses for anybody now. Lads are just finished club championships, should still be fit, even if they were uh, enjoying themselves for a couple of days or drowning their sorrows for a couple of days after championships finish. But this is a predict. It's nearly old school at this stage because we we don't see that many trial games anymore. And I think it's great that people are just going to be able to walk in and see these games and see who impresses and who could be on the squad. And there's no excuses for anybody. Yeah, absolutely. Look, you probably remember the days as well. You could walk into Nolan Park and watch Kilkenny train and ten days out from an All Ireland final and just sit down and watch the session. I know in Kerry they took umbrage when wasn't it Aim Fitzmaurice uh, had to close the gates, you know. Um, and we had a man up, yeah. the, up in the trees then. Didn't really go, really go man, <laughs> <laughs> um, so no, look, that's a, it's a lovely idea. And you talk about maybe trial games, but they're kind of they're going along um, all the time under the surface. It was actually just over the young fella again, starting with, um, he's involved in Trinity and they were playing Minute last night in the Higher Education League. And sure, there's Jake Morris playing, you know? So I believe the word went around fairly quickly. Um, I think your man in the yellow helmet uh, is is Jake Morris. So, he, but he was class. The, the bit I, I came over and watched the second half and just um, next level, just in terms of electric pace and setting up lads. So, the Trinity had to play a sweeper after a couple of goals went in. They did really competitive game. Standard was really good, actually. And um, so, like those games, you know, Colin Bonner, 
it's talking about kind of opening games up to the public, like the college's games are actually, it's great to see third level games back. And um, again, so important for those. And there, there's some cracking games going on that, um, that again, if you could find a fixture and go along, you'll see a lot of the county stars playing away. Yeah, a lot, a lot of games in evening time and the Fitzgibbon games will be during mm-hmm. the day, I think, as well. Uh, just a quick comment in there from ML89. The underachieving outside of Galway will always be a throne at Thomas's, but inside Galway, they've been top level, definitely. Uh, they'll become only the second team ever to do four in a row in Galway in the first in 60 yeah. years, should they do it. Still have two games to win to get there. Uh, Phil, you mentioned uh, about uh, third-level colleges games. like It's a real breeding ground of, like if you look at the Limerick team now, uh, you can probably trace the vast majority back to an absolute epic of a Fitzgibbon final that Mary I played against UL many, many moons ago. I think Declan Hannum was playing. Uh, there was uh, there was a load of... Gerard Hegarty was playing wing-back, I think, for UL as well. Like a, It's a great opportunity for guys maybe that wouldn't be seen or are playing with a smaller club or something like that. It's a great opportunity for them to put their hands up. The one I always remember is Shane McGrath and Tip. I think it was a, he had a right good game for LIT or a couple of good games and all of a sudden he got spotted and he was in with Tip and then he has a 10-year career with Tip. Absolutely. And sure we were only talking to Jamie Wall recently who's you know obviously a part of that kind of Limerick coaching success story. And again, he was involved there. He definitely can join the dots between Limerick's... Um, emergence on the national stage like the piercing came along first kind of uh, broke that hoodoo about club all Ar- winning in, in all ireland and the the college side of things um uh, you know mary i lit and ul like, stacked with stars who kind of came along and did it so and the, and the college dynamic you know it's, it's very different as well like you see um it's kind of away from the spotlight lads can mix and um, gives you that opportunity you like you say of coming from different clubs and playing up and like last night if you were if you were playing last night say you were trinity corner back and you're marking jake morris like that's <laughs> you know and i remember like back in the day we we played dcu and you have to mix of players remember we were up like we'd sean power playing full back and robbie shorto went on to kind of captain i think he kenny to intermediate just just class and um, but like you johnny pilkin i was watching lake regale there last week johnny pilkin was playing midfield one of the days uh, for ucd i think at the time you know so and that that opportunity for the college it's different dynamic and then the lads i think the bus they were heading back into town you know and probably you know a few pints after or whatever you know so it's just it's 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 a different kind of really important dynamic for for young hurling as well it's massive and you learn an awful lot uh, ryan o'dwyer who was on earlier i would have went and played uh, with Joel with him probably with shane's brother paddy as well and pat cronin from cork seamus hickey from limerick and you pick up different things and you see how people are doing things maybe and you kind of start looking at your own game and tweaking right. things as well you know absolutely and again <clears throat> the change in dublin you could see even at dcu i think um sean oge or helping came in the, the last year i was there and like sean oge just that drive and standard so and um, again i think typically they got better when i left and Nick, nicky english came in and managed the the team the following year i think and um, so like you, you've guys like that coming in and changing the whole dynamic of a of a dressing room or even a culture in a college so like it's, it's great mix and, and there's you know so they're really important competitions i think it was very unfortunate that they kind of the you know they disappeared from the radar last year really it also offers like just someone like shane conway he was fitzgibbon cup hurler the year absolutely. a couple of years ago just yeah. shows that he would absolutely excel uh with with cork or whoever if he was with them as well it gives them the yeah. opportunity too but you're even coming back coming back in the car driving jack only kind of saying oh look at jack fagan um you know, he went from <clears throat> went from me and just the right environment, and suddenly showed that like there's there's hurlers of talent of the standard in every county. It's just the right opportunity, maybe the right coach in the right environment. So college is is brilliant like that for kind of giving them that different you know different opportunities. And like say Shane Conway didn't they bring the cup home to him after That's right, with the yeah. whole yeah. the whole of them went down. You know, if it shows the respect he's held in. Just a couple of other county finals. Uh, Phil, you mentioned about Nace. Nace are obviously won the football last weekend for the first time in 31 years, I think it was. The the player kind of managed Nace, which maybe would set a trend, a trend in time. Uh, we'll see, but they're going for a double at the weekend. Uh, I think the likes of Brian Byrne and a few others would be would be on both squads. Uh, they're going up against Selbridge at the weekend in the Kildare final in Mayo. Then you have Ballyhonas against Turin. They'd be the two real... Uh, traditional hurling strongholds in Mayo. Uh, Keith Higgins is obviously the main man for Mayo. Just a, a word on him. Uh, 
isn't it just phenomenal to say that he could spend, you know, 12 or 13 years or, you know, or maybe even a bit more playing football for Mayo and then he slips back in to inter-county hurling, albeit at a, at a lower level and he captains him to win a Nicky record in his, in his first year. Like, he's a phenomenal, a phenomenal man, really. Ah, absolutely. And it's funny, years ago, actually, even Rato here, we hosted the All-Ireland Intermediate 11 aside, the kind of equivalent to Jude's and Kilmacud. And Bally Hornis, um came up and he was a star with them. So kind of watched them playing at club level. I think they reached the, the semi-final um, at that stage. So a super team. And again, it was just funny seeing him in a club jersey and absolutely kind of running the show at times. So, And he'll tell you himself, I think maybe Hurland's right up there whether it's his first love, like there's, it's they're really passionate about the game down down there, and um, and like then you 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 look at Nace, the success story there, they challenged themselves, haven't they? Different age groups playing inside in Kilkenny, isn't it as well? And yeah. you know the, they've obviously very well organised. They have the numbers that spill over kind of from Dublin as well, and um, in terms of like the, um, the good numbers to take from but clearly very well organized a lot of good people involved there so they look like they're they're here to stay definitely they would have had a, a massive massive amount of nice players involved in that under 20 win over wexford earlier on this year as well there'd be a lot of those guys still involved uh, i think when Nace played, I remember when I covered the Christy Ring final last year, I think five of the six Kildare forwards are from Nace. You have Jack Sheridan, uh, Brian Byrne, uh, and there's definitely at least two or three more. So if you have uh, marquee forwards, you're always going to have a big chance no matter what time of the year. Just a couple of other county finals, the London Senior Hurdle final replay. Uh, it's Robert Emmett against Gabriels. I think Gabriels were... Uh, had got a free to level at the last day. One of my own club mates from Borough, Neil Rogers, is the player manager with them. So I'd like to wish them luck. That should be another interesting game. Uh, the Kilkenny Intermediate Final is probably not the final pairing that uh, we we as journalists would have wanted because we probably would have wanted uh, Henry Shefflin in the final and for his journey as Galway manager and Thomas the man Thomas the manager to be going kind of side by side. But Owen Murphy was absolutely outstanding for Glenn Moore. That's one of the main reasons uh, they turned over Thomas Town in the semi final. Uh, just in another in another era, uh, Owen Murphy would be playing outfield for Kilkenny in in another era, or if they had a goalkeeper of his of even close to his standard to step in his place. Oh, yeah, um, sure wasn't he top scorer in Fitzgibbon for WIT years ago? Yeah. Like he, was he captained him, yeah, to Fitzgibbon yeah, title. He, yeah, he was absolutely brilliant um, outfield, and I think wasn't it the, the point he scored on the run even last week? Was it in yeah, off his like, left hand side? It's so yeah. difficult. Like it's one yeah. of the most difficult things to do in a game, and a goalkeeper is able to do it. Like that show you how naturally talented he is. Yeah. I'm sure he plays. He plays the goalkeeping position like frustrated outfield player. He's basically a sweeper. <laughs> You know, running out, bombing over long range free. So yeah, de definitely. I think if they had an alternative to him in goal, I'd say unfortunately for himself, he's he's so good in goals they can't kind of play him outfield. But he, I would have thought he would be an option definitely up front, particularly when TJ Reid was kind of um, had so much of the scoring burden in recent years. Yeah, I think he played. I think he played one game corner forward, a league game, and it mightn't have gone so well at the start of his career. And then all of a sudden, he was shifted back into the goals. But it'd be very hard to light it up in your first game. Just a couple of comments there. SSRI had up that Keith Higgins won uh, a Railway Cup medal back in '04. He did indeed. He's, I think, he's one of the might be the only uh, the only Connacht player to have hurling and football Railway Cups to the best of my knowledge. And uh, we had another comment in there, ML89, Keith Higgins, his father, is a Galway man. I think he had a big hand in keeping Hurlan uh, going and Barry honest and helping it keep going. I think that that's it's yeah. great. And then that's basically what happens a lot of times. I remember chatting to someone in Castle Blaney Fogs. Uh, I think it was someone from Kilkenny had went up there and was managing their team. They played in an all Ireland Junior Club final recently. But somebody... Uh, marries within an area or something like that and they bring their interests to that area and bring it to their kids and that's often what happens uh just in the Kilkenny intermediate finals there's Glenn Moore against Lockton's at the weekend you have all the Murphys Alan Owen and their younger brother Shane along with along with Jerry Aylward and Ian Burnaby one of their best forwards they're playing Lockton's who would be led by James Marr and uh, Liam Hickey would be another good forward for them as well Glenn Moore probably heavy enough favourites to win that and just from chatting a few people down in Kilkenny they seem to think they them more would fit in uh, fine at senior level should they get there. Uh, just a quick one, Phil. I just want to go down through the, the Leinster Club hurling draw as it is at the moment. So it's all kind of taking shape. These games are going to be played in a couple of weeks, but the quarterfinals are Mount Leinster Rangers against the Shamrocks Valley Hale, 
Clock Balakala against Rapparees, Raharney against the winners of Kilmacroaks and Nafina. They'll all be played on the twenty, the weekend of the twenty eighth of November. Uh, you have the winners of Mount Leinster and Shamrocks playing against Clock Balakala and Rapparees. Then you have the Offaly champions, which would be either Saint Rhinus or Coolary playing against Mount Leinster Rangers or Ballyhale in the semi final, and then the final will be in Crow Park, which is great. And then just the Munster, uh, Munster draw is Bally. The winners of Bally A and Ina Kilnamona face a tough uh, task against Bally Gunner on the 28th of November. And uh, the second week in December, Kilmallock play either Middleton or Ben Rovers, the Cork champions, and the Tipperary champions, which would be Turles Archfields or Lockmore, play the winner of Bally Gunner against the Clare champions. And lastly, then in Ulster, the semi final, this is a really, really tasty semi final in the middle of December. Dun Dunlaiku Collins against Schlock Neil with Bally Cran awaiting for the winners uh, on the 19th of December. How do you see uh, are Shamrocks your favourites for the All Ireland going in or Bally Gunner or who do you think who would you see as the, being at the forefront of the, uh, the All Ireland betting or the All Ireland rankings going into the provincial campaign? I think they're, they're the two teams now that's. Um does certainly spring to mind you know like, like when you look through the sham valley hails what they've kind of done to this point and i don't know is there a motivation like does it count as a you know an all ireland three in a row when you've yeah when you yeah. get gap years in, in between but like valley gunner remember that the kind of seismic clash with valley gunner in the the muck and the rain was it in Turles a few yeah. years back so valley gunner would love another tilt at them if they can get that far and then once there's going to be really competitive but like no more than shamrocks what they have a uh, uh, so much experience after winning county titles in succession that they're kind of definitely have their eye on bigger pictures so yeah i'd be with you mike they're the two teams that kind of i would have thought would be the the ones to, that are gonna have to be displaced just an interesting comment, and he's probably right from ML89. All the sides bar Ballyhale are actually very close and standard in Leinster. They are, in fairness. Uh, SSRI thinks for Harney could be the surprise packets. They have beaten a few teams before. It'll be Coolary, I think, about 10 or 11 years ago in Leinster. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Just the last uh, little bit of news, which broke last night. Um, Philip, it was probably uh, one of the worst kept secrets um, in AFL history, but that Ushi Mullen has signed a two year rookie contract with the Geelon Cats where he'll join uh, Mark O'Connor. Um, so, he's former Young Footballer of the Year. I think he's, I think he's nominated for Young Footballer of the Year again this year. He could well be, I think. Um, the, he's, his club action finished up last weekend when Kilmaine. Uh, lost an intermediate semi-final uh, to Mayo Gale, so that paved the way for Geelong to confirm his arrival. They just said, Ushin is a very athletic and talented prospect. We are thrilled he's chosen to join the Cats as he transitions to AFL. Ushin has already established himself as an elite player in the GA, and it is, uh, it is a big step to make the move to Australia. We have a strong plan in place around his development and transition to football. Obviously, a massive uh, acquisition for the AFL, but a monstrous loss to Mayo football. Absolutely, and look, nobody can begrudge any young player he heading heading across down under and trying to make a career. But it, it's obviously a huge loss to Mayo. Like you mentioned, Keith Higgins there, and already he's what a couple of seasons, and he's been spoken in in kind of the same terms of actually being a player you could build a team around. And like Mayo have lost Keith Higgins, you know, Colin Boyle is obviously. Um, drop back down in terms of his involvement you look at Lee Keegan and again Mullen is one of those who I'm sure Mayo fans are kind of looking and saying he could be the next Lee Keegan for him so it's it is it's huge so I'd, it's again it just depends we'll see how it plays out plenty of players have come back and look the Tyrone Conor McKenna story shows that you can have a you can get that perfect ending, dream ending both ways, maybe after coming back from Australia. So, so we'll we'll see what happens. But clearly, huge talent um, and the, the physical attributes that clearly made him a target from the get go. Same man, eighty nine. Just an interesting comment, and it's a fair point too. Just hope the Oshie Mullen stays injury free, whatever it is. But the majority of Irish lads that head down end up with awful injuries, in, uh, as in serious injuries, and the number of injuries that they pick up. Tommy Walsh, I think took his hamstring off the bone when he was over there and that kind of finished him up there. If I was to say the whatever about athletic ability, 
uh, I, I think that's kind of nearly put on side. If you're to make it uh, as an Irishman down the AFL, it's a lot to do with your character, I'd say. And the fact that he has a ponytail and wears pink boots would strike me is that he's a very independent fella and that he would, that he'll enjoy the challenge and revel in the challenge and probably the homesickness element, maybe if he's an independent fella, which I'm kind of would sit, would I would reckon that he is, that he has a great chance of making it down there. Athletically, he'll have absolutely no issue uh, fitting in. He, one of the most seamless transitions to senior to county football that I've seen from anyone in recent years. So we'll follow his progress very, very closely. It's another, it is, um, his his absence will be talked about throughout the year as yet another reason why Mayo might not win in All-Ireland. And the more reasons that you stack up, be it Killian O'Connor's injury, be it the curse and everything else that comes with it, they keep fighting back. So it's going to be interesting to see how they bounce back from this one because they invariably do bounce back from anything that's thrown at them. Yeah, they do, but it's like it really does make it harder now. Like again, you you can't begrudge them heading off. You, you just wonder. Like it's very hard to keep lads in the country. But are there? You know, plenty of other counties have looked. Whether it's through employers or somebody out there who can kind of offer a career. You know that the career down under could could um, present to them. So. It's just tricky. I know uh, Mayo had problems with their own sugar daddies in the past, you know, but whether somebody comes in and, and kind of writes writes a check for, for Oisin to kind of come back come back home. But um, he definitely, uh, he's, he's going to be a huge loss. It'll, it'll be very interesting to see whether he makes it because, again, for all the, the, the romance of kind of going to Australia, it's fairly cutthroat, brutal world of professional sport and a, a lot don't. So it'll be very interesting to see, like you say, whether it's the personality to go with the talent and, and character and wants to, to or can stay and make it. Just a comment in from Travis Wheeler before we finish up. AFL is a brutal watch. Even if you make it out there, you won't be minted. Far from it. And ultimately, you're very disposable to the Aussies. Horrific injury potential also. Pity Mullen left. The only thing I'll say on that is, I know from chatting to Conor McKenna, that he was brilliantly looked after in Essendon and they let him go home whenever he needed to go home. And there was a real personal touch to what they were doing. So I'd imagine... Um, it would be the same with Oshin. They want to keep them there. They want to do everything possible to to basically to look after you and make your the more enjoyable your time is there, the more of an asset you are to them as a club. So I'd imagine he'd be very well looked after. Just before we finish up, uh remember just to subscribe to our game on YouTube. We're edging in towards the 10k uh of subscriptions on YouTube. So just uh, the bottom right hand corner there underneath Philip, if you press that button and turn on your push notifications and you'll get uh, reminded about when there's a show upcoming. Uh, and if you want to catch us on Patreon, we would really appreciate it. It's five euro per month and you can listen to the show at any time and you can listen while you're exercising or walking or running or as the saying always says, uh, uh, when you're lying in the bath, you can you can listen to it as well. And just thanks a million to our sponsors, Torpy Bamboo. Um, to get 10% off the bamboo, Torpy Bamboo, type in our the promo code our game into their website and you will get 10% off. Just last comment from Sean O'Sullivan. Uh, he just said, think dubs to win football, similar to KK, to KK, to win one last one in 2011 after a drive for five been shattered. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. I think there's a bit of a, a bounce in them. But uh, Philip, thanks a million for joining us today. Really appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the Cavan football final at the weekend. Mullen Yachta, one side of the half parish, won the Longford Championship at the weekend. And I believe they would be celebrate. They were celebrating in Gauna on Sunday night. So hopefully the other half of the, the parish will be able to join the celebrations on Sunday evening. Absolutely. Cheers, Michael. Cheers, Phil. The Hurling Show, brought to you in association with Torpy. Torpy are leading hurling into a new future with Bamboo, a revolutionary hurley created using their unique engineered hurling performance know-how. Already being used by many inter-county players, Torpy's bamboo is highly sustainable, offers players greater striking distance and a more consistent balance every time without compromising on natural feel. Check them out on the Torpy website and in the link below and enter the promo code OURGAME to get yourself 10% off.